We are shown two figures engaged in a battle in a desolate land. They are a hero and a demon king who will determine the fate of this world. The demon king chants a meteor spell aimed at the hero. Meanwhile, the hero merely takes a small stone and throws it with all his might using magic. The small stone successfully shatters the giant meteor into pieces. The hero asks the demon king to fight seriously. The demon king agrees to end this battle immediately. He unleashes his full power to attack. Meanwhile, the hero uses his ultimate move, the Dragon Annihilator, a technique that destroys dragons with five swords. Their movements are so fast and powerful that they even cause the surrounding land to crumble. Despite fighting with their full strength, both of them remain undefeated. However, they are now extremely exhausted. The hero's black hair has turned white. In the end, they continue to advance, gasping for breath, and they stab each other's bodies. Thus, both of them fall down. The scene then shifts to a castle that serves as an academy. There is a boy dressed differently from the others. The boy has unusual hair, with the right side white and the left side black. The boy is impressed by the students greeting each other. He is determined to find friends and become ordinary. Apparently, the boy is a transfer student. In the school hallway, the boy greets every student he sees. Some students are curious about him, and the boy approaches them quickly. He introduces himself to them, his name is Blade. The four students that Blade approached also introduced themselves. There's Kasim, Clay, Jessica, and Claire. Blade says he came here to find friends. Claire offers the four of them to become his friends. Blade is overjoyed because he is successfully made for friends. His goal is to have 100 friends. Soon, a girl with red hair approaches Blade because he is being too noisy. The girl is Arnis Flaming, one of the top-ranking students commonly referred to as Empress. Blade doesn't care about that and instead introduces himself to Arnest as well. Arnest becomes angry, especially since Blade's face looks unfamiliar. Claire explains that Blade is a transfer student. However, Arnest does not believe it. Rosewood Academy is a special school for people who want to become heroes and protect the world. It's impossible for a student to join in the middle of the semester. Blade says that he doesn't care much about being a hero. He just wants to find friends. Arnest becomes even angrier upon hearing this. Then, Blade suddenly remembers that he has to meet the headmaster. He asks Arnest to take him there reluctantly. They finally arrived in front of the headmaster's office door. As they entered, Arnest immediately knelt down, not expecting to see the figure before her. Blade simply stood and spoke familiarly with that person. The man standing before them was the king of this kingdom. Blade himself already knew that the man was the king. The king said that he had heard a lot about Arnest from the previous headmaster. As he stated, from now on, the king would be the headmaster of this academy. Upon hearing this, Arnest praised him, honored to be taught directly by a great warrior. However, for now, the king only had business with Blade. He asked Arnest to leave the room. When they were outside, Arnest became angry again because Blade was acting familiar with the king. In fact, Blade himself didn't know why the king was there. The king said he wanted Blade's power to return. However, Blade just wanted to be an ordinary person. The king even went as far as changing the academy's curriculum. Blade felt that it was unnecessary. Besides, the demon king was no longer there. According to the king's report, the powers of the hero and the demon king were lost when they exchanged attacks. However, the king believed that his power could rise again. A few moments later, Blade met Arnest again. He wondered why Blade was here when this was the arena for the top ranking class. He turned out that after taking the lower ranking class exam, Blade was told to come here. He even showed his top ranking class emblem. Arnest clearly didn't believe that a transfer student suddenly entered the top ranking class. Arnest accused him of bribing or using a backdoor entrance. Setting aside those accusations, Blade, as usual, introduced himself to everyone present. Arnest was angry because he wasn't being listened to. However, Blade said that he was listening while patting Arnest's head. Because of that, Arnest became embarrassed and swung her sword. Blade was able to easily dodge her attack, but the impact of the attack was powerful enough to erode the arena wall. Shortly after, 
a girl with white hair approached Blade and Arnis to inform them that class was about to begin. Blade introduced himself once again. The girl was unsure of how to react. According to Arnis, she just needed to introduce herself in return. The girl agreed and introduced herself as Sophie. Still feeling uncertain, Arnis asked the teacher for permission to test Blade's abilities before the lesson began. Arnis wanted to test him by attacking magical metal. According to Arnis, everyone in the top ranking class could scratch the magical metal. So, Blade had to make a stronger impact if he wanted to be recognized in this class. Arnis said that the top ranking class existed in a different dimension. Blade asked back how many dimensions were different. Arnis didn't expect Blade to ask that, so she simply answered randomly, saying three dimensions. Blade then knew what technique he would use. The other students recognized the stances created by Blade. Then, Blade used the Dragon Eater, a technique that destroys dragons with two swords. Not only did he scratch the metal, but the attack magical metal also completely shattered. His attack continued, destroying part of the arena wall. After witnessing his ability, Arnest became curious about who Blade really was. He answered that he was just an ordinary person, and that was one of the reasons he came to this academy. During lunch break, Blade approached Arnest, who was eating alone. Blade invited others to sit at their table, but they hesitated because Arnest was there. It seemed that she was feared by other students. Despite that, Blade thanked Arnest. As a transfer student, Blade felt grateful to have found a friend like Arnest. Arnest herself did not expect to be seen that way by him. However, Blade said that they were friends, especially since they were eating together. Arnest became shy and accepted Blade's statement. It was already nighttime, and Arnest had just returned to her room. Earlier, Arnest seemed to disregard Blade's words. However, when she was alone, she was actually overjoyed because it was the first time she had made a friend. While she was feeling happy, Arnest suddenly felt a great fire from within her. Unable to control it, she immediately fainted. Blade took her to the academy's infirmary. When they arrived, the nurse there said it was beyond her capabilities. She could handle ordinary illnesses or injuries, but dealing with magical diseases or curses was different. Sometime later, Arnest finally regained consciousness. Blade helped her walk because she was still weak. However, when they reached a group of other students, Arnest insisted on walking alone. In addition, she asked Blade not to tell anyone that she had fainted. Later that night, Blade went to a room that appeared to be secret. There were many robot guards there, but Blade defeated them all. Afterward, he opened a door by inserting a crystal. The door led to a modern room that looked like a database. Blade searched for information about something in Rosewood Academy, specifically information about Arnis' sword, Asmadius. After obtaining the desired information, he planned to talk to Arnis the next day. Blade revealed that he knew the secret of Arnis' sword. The sword had its own consciousness and could grant great power to its owner. However, currently Arnest was an imperfect donor. Blade asked why her condition was like that. Reluctantly, Arnest had to tell him. When she was six years old, she touched the cursed magic sword kept by the flaming family. The bloodthirsty will of the sword tried to take over her body. Since then, Arnest had always resisted it. Her hair, which was originally black, turned red because of it. Even now, Arnest still often heard whispers from Asmadius, but Asmadius itself did not control her. Arnest knew there was a way to solve this problem, which was to convince the sword that she was its rightful owner. However, Arnest was worried that a bloodthirsty demon would be born if she failed. If that were to happen, Blade said he would defeat the demon. Moreover, he believed that Arnest would succeed. After that, Arnest challenged the sword, Asmadius, to establish a pact. For that, she had to be tested first. A fire tornado formed around Arnest. Currently, Arnest was fighting Asmadius mentally. Outside the tornado, fire demons started causing havoc. However, they were no match for Blade. Meanwhile, Arnest was determined to win, especially after being trusted by Blade. The fire tornado grew bigger, but it did not intimidate Blade at all. He believed that Arnest could pass her test. Shortly after, the fire tornado vanished, 
and Arnest fell from it. She stood up again and successfully conquered the Asmadia sword. After overcoming her long-standing problem, Arnest slightly changed her appearance and became more cheerful. Other students were even more amazed by her presence.